Hi everyone, my name's Matt. This is Quests and Quills. Used to be fighting writing. I'll get into that in a little bit more detail later on in the video. But I wanted to talk about Hex and Guard 2 and their buildings for Mordheim, Frostgrave, or whatever it is that you're playing. Let's dig into it. Okay, heads up before we start. Um, Scott at Tideworld Studios did send me the STLs for um, all of the buildings that you can see on this board, except for this one, which was from Hex and Guard Wave 1, which I bought myself with my own hard-earned cashola. Um, but everything else... He has been kind enough to send through so that I could have a play with it before the Kickstarter um, starts within the next week or so, the beginning of October. So if you've used Hex and Guard 1, you know what to expect. If you've not, um, they are phenomenal modular pieces of terrain that you can use for, like I say, Mordheim, Frostgrave, or any kind of game like that. The scale is spot on. The, the modularity is brilliant. They they fit together nicely. I've printed everything here on my A1, which isn't especially well-tuned or anything. It's just straight out of the box. And the tolerance levels on everything, how they slot together, how they clip together, absolutely spot on. But when it comes to sequels, we all know that they can either be awful or they can be phenomenal. So I wanted to know... Hex and Guard 2, was it going to be a massive improvement on Hex and Guard 1? Was it just going to be a few more buildings? Could it add anything to what I'd already got? And so I had a bit of a dig around. Scott sent me these files probably about a month ago now, and I set about printing them, and it took a long time to print because there's a lot of it. Everything that he sent me is not here on the board. There's still stuff that I haven't just had chance to paint or put together. There's loads of doors for all of the buildings. There's more signs. There's um, winches that hang off of the buildings. There's risers. There's extra bits for the boat. There's lanterns like this that can dot around. And I just, in order to get this video ready for the Kickstarter launch, I just haven't had time to print everything, which is amazing. The fact that you get all of that stuff, even down to the little scatter terrain bits like the crates, and things like that that just come with it, and the steps, and all of this dock stuff, all in um, Wave 2. And he has added so much detail. Like Hex and Guard 1, if you haven't seen my videos raving about that, check that out up here. But there's there's just so much more detail. Things like all of the signs hanging off. Um, even down, you can't really see it here, you'll see it later on in the video, there's oars on the buildings, and nets, and just extra little details all around. This one's a different theme to Wave 1. This is much more nautically themed. But this building here, the New Rose Tavern, is from Phase 1, and it sits perfectly together. Um, you've got a slight difference between the tiles and the shingles, but other than that, the designs, the woodwork, the buildings, they all sit brilliantly next to each other. So if you've got Phase 1, you will absolutely love Phase 2 because you know what you're getting, and it's even better. If you haven't got Phase 1, why not? What are you doing? Go and get it. Go and back it now and then back the Kickstarter. I mean, it, like with Wave 1, there will be um, complete buildings and there'll be ruined buildings. Um, there's a whole selection of buildings already, but obviously there are extension goals and things like that. So go and check it out. I'll leave the link in the um, description below. Enough about me waffling. You want to see how I made the board. Let's get into that. Once I'd printed off the ground floor of every building, just so I'd got an idea of what space they needed, I started setting them out on some plywood. Um, normally my boards are 500mm by 500mm. I soon realised that I would need more space for this, so I went up to 600mm by 600mm. So these are 2 foot by 2 foot, for those of you who haven't embraced the metric system yet. Um, and that means there's going to be a little bit of a storage issue down the line but it's it's fine it just gave me a little bit more space to play with once i'd got that sorted i cut some 15 mil by 15 mil um pine and attached it to the board i started off by nailing it into place um i used some contact adhesive as well and then i soon realized that the nails were going all the way through and out the other side and almost nailing it to the table so i resorted to using screws it was much safer and it saved the furniture What you end up with there is a pretty sturdy um, board. There's still a little bit of wobble in this, so what I might do is put a cross beam if um, I've got enough wood. But I need to do the second one now, and then we will see how they join together. See you in a minute. 
Let's take a quick second to talk about the actual files and how they printed. I printed everything on a Bamboo Lab A1, except for the orange layer which was printed on an Ender 3. Um, everything was printed with a 0.4mm nozzle at 0.24mm layer height and the detail is absolutely superb with those settings. I didn't need anything higher than that. Um, and everything printed, I didn't have any failures, it, it all printed really well. Okay, so I think at this point I've got out sorted. Um, so what I'm thinking is there's going to be the dock walls will come along here um, and, and stick quite close to this one, perhaps with a thin path in front. I like the idea that this tower is kind of standing over the water almost. Um, I'm still not quite sure. I, I would like a little bridge at some point because I want a pathway through and I think I might put that here so have a path come in here these two bits raised up by an extra level so there's a path here and a bridge across and then there's the lower deck so those two sit higher than the dock base this one will then sit down onto the dock and there'll be some steps up at the back I think that will go there and that will just be a lower flat level I might lift that one up and have some steps going up to that one as well. Um, the only thing, because I've got two of these um, warehouse buildings, one of them's the complete um, base, one of them's the um, ruined base, um, I might turn this one round. So kind of from the front, visually it looks different. Um, yeah. Okay, let's start working with some polystyrene and see how we look, how it looks when it's all built up. That'll be the next test. I'm just going to go by now and draw some lines where I need the polystyrene to come to, and then we'll get it cut. Using the hot wire cutter, I cut down some white polystyrene. This stuff is great. This packing polystyrene is great for bulking out the land areas um, without using expensive XPS um, foam for this. And when I was setting them out, I wanted variations in height. That was important for me with this. I wanted to have them um, so that I could walk between the buildings as well. I needed them to be close enough that I could put uh, walkways between them to, to kind of get multi-level fighting going on. I glued everything down with Gorilla Glue, um, which is kind of an expanding adhesive, so you have to weigh it down. Um, but once it was all glued down, I started adding the brick walls. This took forever. I always use a hot glue gun for the first layer, um, that just holds it in place and then for the layers after that I just use white glue so I use Mod Podge because it's got a good strong hold but by putting these things in using a hot glue gun they're not shifting anywhere, it fuses the polystyrene to the XPS um, and it just gives a much stronger layer to build up against. Even once the Mod Podge is set, there's still a little bit of weakness to the bricks. So I fill in all the cracks with, I usually use a mixture of grout and plaster. For this one I just use plastic because I'd run out of grout and then seal that by just soaking it all in water and letting it set. I then used the handheld hot wire cutter to gouge out kind of underscored cliff, cliff faces. Um, to give it a, a base look of a rocky kind of overhang. Um, a lot of the work will be done with rock moulds later. Um, and I did the same thing with the island where the lighthouse is going to sit as well. I then used hot glue gun to stick the rock moulds in. Some of these are made of plaster, some of them are resin. Whenever I do a resin pour and I have excess resin, I always pour them into um, the rock mould. Um, it's just a great way of using the resin. It was something, I think got that idea from, it was either Eric's Hobby Workshop or Leif over at Devs and Dice, but it's definitely something worth doing if you're doing resin pours and you've got the moulds. Okay, so I've managed to finish all the brickwork on one of them and I'm pleased with it, it's looking pretty cool. I've not put the grout in or any plaster in yet. All of these have been stuck on with a hot glue gun because it's just gonna be more solid. <clears throat> and I've put the, um, Put the rock faces in under there and I'll get some sculpting mode on there in a bit. 
Um, we've got some steps to get up there. And I've put some more steps in at the back to get up to that one. And I'm probably going to put a path up here, like a track, so like a dirt track up to that one. Um, but other than that, it's looking pretty cool so far. I had some crystals that I'd printed in resin months ago, maybe even years ago, that I decided to add here as weird stone. Um, also built up a wall around one of the buildings, um, always using a mini to check that there's space for something to hide there or something to move there. It's always good to have one to hand. Um, then I wanted a bridge across the passageway, so I took a couple of blocks of XPS, freehanded the curve of the bridge, and then used that to kind of cut out um, cut two slices off of the edge which would become the walls and then cut down the middle bit so that it sat below the two walls and then those two bits that I cut off at the beginning could be kind of added back on um, to give it a nice wall. It's really simple kind of bridge design um, scored in some stones using a, a, a clay tool and then I covered the bottom and the top eventually with sculptor mold which I then used a roller um, to give it a cobblestone texture. Um, went around the rest of the cliff face using sculptor mold to fill in all of those gaps between the, the rock molds that I'd added to build up a path. Um, you can see I've, I've used offcuts here, this is a great place to use offcuts you're not going to use anywhere else. It just packs it out so you don't need as much sculptor mold, it keeps the weight down of the board um, and it keeps the cost down. I'd got a few more crystals that I'd printed off ages ago that I just stuck in as well. I just kind of thought, well, there's been the big twin comet explosion. Let's have some weird stone poking out of the ground. Um, smoothed it all down, tried to get it as smooth as possible. Um, I perhaps could have made it smoother when I come back to it later. The idea here was to build it around the bottom of the building, take the bottom of the building out, and then I could glue it down later. It actually got stuck into the sculptor mold, so I didn't end up having to glue it down anyway. Um, for the edges of the boards, I tried using cardboard, but in the end I settled on some thin, I think it's 1.5mm um, plywood. So I cut out the shapes that I needed, I used a little table saw um, to make sure that it all fit, and then glued all of that on using hot glue, and it just protects the edges when I take them into schools. Okay, um, quick interjection just to kind of catch up with where we are. Everything is now covered. Um, all of the polystyrene has been painted with the Mod Podge mix, so that should be fine for me to prime it in a bit. All of the edges of the boards are now covered with that thin plywood. I think it's plywood, thin wood, whatever it is. Um, and I've used sculptor mold to kind of fill back into the edges. That's why I went slightly above when I put it on. It just gives you, it's a nicer edge. I can fill up to it. And the same as around here, I filled all of these with filler. Uh, needs a little bit of a sand, but I'll do that later. So everything is now protected. Everything, like kind of the, the messy work is all finished now, all the sculpting. Um, what I'm going to do now is I'll take it all outside, I'll prime the whole thing black, um, just with a light black coat. I'm not going to go really heavy on it, it's just to kind of try and catch any bits of white and things like that, just so there's no white showing. I'm My plan with this is to try and get the spray cans to do most of the painting work. So And the same for the buildings. So this building bit here is predominantly wood. So I'll give it a black prime, um, and I'll prime all the buildings in black now as well. But then I'll go back over it, instead of giving it a zenithal highlight in white, I'm going to try and give it a zenithal kind of overlay in brown, so that most of the painting work is done. Then I should be able to just dry brush that up, and then go in with a, a brush and paint the little metallics and things like that. Most of the buildings are either predominantly wood or predominantly stone. Most of this is all predominantly stone, so again I'll give it a grey zenithal afterwards and then I can go in and touch it up and add washes and things like that to give it a lot of variance um, but I just want to let this, the rattle cans do the majority of the work because it, otherwise it will just take forever especially with the buildings.
Okay, um, quick interjection just to kind of catch up with where we are. Everything is now covered. Um, all of the polystyrene has been painted with the Mod Podge mix, so that should be fine for me to prime it in a bit. All of the edges of the boards are now covered with that thin plywood. I think it's plywood, thin wood, whatever it is. Um, and I've used Sculpt to Mold to kind of fill back into the edges. That's why I went slightly above when I put it on. It just gives you, it's a nicer edge. I can fill up to it. And the same as around here, I filled all of these with filler. Uh, needs a little bit of a sand, but I'll do that later. So everything is now protected. Everything, like kind of the, the messy work is all finished now, all the sculpting. Um, what I'm going to do now is I'll take it all outside. I'll prime the whole thing black. Um, just with a light black coat. I'm not going to go really heavy on it. It's just to kind of try and catch any bits of white and things like that, just so there's no white showing. I'm My plan with this is to try and get the spray cans to do most of the painting work. So, and the same for the buildings. So this building bit here is predominantly wood. So I'll give it the black prime. Um, and I'll prime all the buildings in black now as well. But then I'll go back over it. Instead of giving it a zenithal highlight in white, I'm gonna try and give it a zenithal kind of overlay in brown. So that most of the painting work is done. Then I should be able to just dry brush that up and then go in with a, a brush and paint the little metallics and things like that. Most of the buildings are either predominantly wood or predominantly stone. Most of this is all predominantly stone. So again, I'll give it a gray zenithal afterwards and then I can go in and touch it up and add washes and things like that to give it a lot of variance. Um, but I just want to let this, the rattle cans do the majority of the work because it, otherwise it will just take forever, especially with the buildings. Give everything um, an oil wash with a mixture of black oil paint and white spirits and then start adding other colors mainly um, kind of ochres and umbers different browns and oranges into it just to give different various stains across it for the cliffs I decided to go a bit crazy and I use blues greens oranges and blacks and actually when they're all blended together with white spirits it looks really cool um, it looks like a natural rock so if you look at a rock face in the cliff it has blues it has greens it has yellows in there and so by blending them all together like this, um, it just gives it a much more natural look. And when it's dry brushed up later anyway, it doesn't really make a difference. To finish off the bridge, once it was stuck in place, I sculpted a mold and went over it with a texture roller just to give it a cobblestone effect so it blended in. And then primed all of the buildings with black primer. Um, I did let then the brown and the gray army painter primers do a lot of the work when it came to base coating. Um, but this was a good first step it gave all the shadow colors uh like with any zenithal um stuck everything together that needed to be stuck together using super glue went over with the browns and grays once i'd primed everything with the army paint i then went in and overbrushed everything with lighter browns lighter grays just to give it all of that texture and then started building up the dry brushing all the way through Okay, we're most of the way through the dry brushing. That's a big pile. We just got to put a few more light highlights on there and then it's going to be a case of going through and painting all the metal work and all the little details and then um, the plaster and stuff like that on ones like this. And again, with getting all of that done and then I will come back once all the details are painted and we're ready for the next um, next step. At the minute, it is mainly just highlighting and touching in different colors, so there's no point filming all of that. See you in a bit. This is a really cool design feature and I didn't have time to print and paint all of the doors which is a shame but I will go back and do it. But all of the doors for all of the buildings have these pin mechanisms so that you can slot in the door, drop in a rod, I used a brass rod here, snip it off and then you've got a 
fully hinged door that's solid as anything and opens and closes and isn't going to snap off. Um, it's a brilliant design feature. I was really, really impressed with this. This was the only one I've done on this build. Um, but there was also there's also some sliding doors as well on the warehouse like this one. Um, absolutely brilliant design features. I was really impressed with these. Definitely print them off. Definitely have a play around with them and see what you can do with them as well. Whilst I get on with all that, let's just address the elephant in the room regarding the channel name change. So I started this channel as a tie-in to the writing workshops that I run in schools. Um, and they were originally called Fighting Writing, and this channel was a way of kind of demonstrating how the stuff I used in that workshop was made. And I still stick to those ideals, but it's changed slightly. But also I have rebranded the workshops based on feedback from various different people. So to focus more on the kind of storytelling and role play aspects of the writing workshops, they are now called Quests and Quills rather than Fighting Writing. So it makes sense to change the channel name and the Instagram account name as well to kind of tie in with everything. So it's nothing more complicated than that. But from now on, this channel will be Quests and Quills. You'll still get the same stuff. I'm going to be focusing on a lot more Mordheim stuff again, a lot more um, old Warhammer -y stuff. So I do want to do some Man of War Islands at some point in the near future. But all of that kind of stuff will be coming along the line soon. So do stick around, like and subscribe, click the bell, share with everybody. But that's the, the kind of story behind the name change. Okay, when I try and peel it back at the minute, the resin is kind of tugging with it. So it's still not set enough for me to comfortably peel it back. So I'm gonna give it a few more hours. Um, I'm gonna nip to Ikea to look at a new kitchen. When I get back from there, I'm gonna have a look and see if it has set more to try and pull it off. It's definitely setting, but it's still got a little bit of give with it. So I don't wanna ruin it. So we'll leave it a little bit longer. I used um, the water effects paste to build up some waves, used a combination of the airbrush and my brush just to push it into ripples, painted the edges black, and then it was time for the big reveal. See what it all looks like now that it's finished. Stick around to the end of the shots because I will go through each individual building and you can see inside each building and how they stack up. Um, hope you've enjoyed it as always. Like and subscribe, click the bell, share the video, do all of that kind of stuff. It makes it all worthwhile to go through all of this. And I will see you next time.